Hi, this is a beginner's guide to my technique on how I paint portraits in pastels. First we'll look at colour theory, then the surface I use and how I mount it, then three stages which is the underdrawing, the rich colours and the details, so we'll look at that. Also how I sharpen the pencils, so let's dive in and take a look. To illustrate the colour, I'm going to use this colour wheel I've made. Uh, this was for my Patreon video I've done. It's an exclusive video which explains in detail how I create shadows for skin tone. So I can use it here, which will be handy for me to just explain how I see colour. Um, so basically how it is, is when I mention, say for instance, a blue. If I say it's a cold blue, it means it's going towards the red, which is making it more of a purpley blue. And then if I say it's warm a blue, it's got more yellow in it, so it's going towards the yellow. Now, same with the yellow here. If it's, if it's going towards the red, it's warmer, so it's making it more orangey. If it's going towards the blue, it makes it a little bit greenier, like lemon yellow, that's quite cold. Now for the red, if it's a warm red, like vermilion red, it's going towards the actual um, <clears throat> the yellow, which is creating an orangey red. And then if it's a cold red, like Elysium Crimson, it's going towards the blue, it's like a purpley red. So when I look at an image, I get a feel of the colour temperature, and then I know what colour to mix with it to make it that temperature. So if I've got a red basic red, and if it feels warmer than what that red I've picked out of the selection is, I just add a bit of yellow to it. And now if it feels colder, I add a bit of blue to it, and so on. Now, to create shadows with the actual, these colours, these primary colours, is to use the complementary colour. So say for red, you've seen me in a lot of me portraits using green to create shadows and to desaturate the red so if the the red is quite saturated and it's too bright uh, you need to sort of dull it down you just add the opposite color which is the green so it dulls it down now with pastels to create a deeper shadow it's difficult now if this was watercolor or oil painting you'd be able to create these quite easily but because it's pastels, it's a different sort of thing altogether. So what I tended to use is a brown and a blue, or purple and a brown, which will create the shadows of each one of these. So the deeper shadows. So I'll just add a bit of brown and blue to uh, the green and red, just to create a deeper shadow. And same goes with if I want in a blue, the, the actual shadow of blue. Sometimes you can use the orange and it creates a nice shadow. If it's not creating that shadow, just add brown and blue together, or brown and purple, and it creates a deeper shadow. And same with uh, the yellow, use purple, and if that don't create the correct shadow, just add a brown and blue. And that's basically what I'm doing. And this I thought I'd just show you how I attach my pastel mat board to the backing board for when I'm drawing and painting. I've just put a centre mark in there, just measured it and ruled it down with some uh, graphite. And then <coughs> on my board, I'll put a centre mark on that. But I'm only showing you this example. This is just a piece of board I'm going to use just to give you some... Uh, tips on how I do the skin tones, uh, the layer system and that, so I don't need a big piece to show that. Um, so if this was, uh, say if it was a 15 by 12 or whatever size, I'd mark up the area but allow another sort of half an inch each side. So I'm just going to have a quarter of an inch right round for this, but you know, you scale it up to what size you want, but for this example I'm just doing, don't matter what size it is really, but I'm just putting this area around because I'm going to tape over that and just show you how I tape it down. 
but obviously that a, this internal area will be scaled up to the size you want. So what I do with that then is flip it over and I've got some blue tech. I've, I've started to use this now because there's a tendency for this board to actually start to curl up in, in different room temperature. So I'm putting a very very small amount of blue tack in each corner just so it sticks to that board a little bit and then I'll tape it as well so that will stop it from falling off the backing board. So, so then what I do then is pop that I've got the lines there you've got your centre line on the board and I've got a centre mark on the actual pastel mat so I just position that into place and this is a tape I use it's a wide decorators tape if you're from the UK this is from Wilco's so basically all I'm just doing is going along that line now and then just press it down And then I'll do just to tidy it up, just go along this edge. The reason for this video is to break it down even further what my layer system is and my technique because I've had messages from people saying can you make it more beginner friendly break it down even further. Now I have got a video in my channel that explains three types of different skin tones from beginning right through to the end so you see me doing all the layers and I go into depth with that so I'll just shine that up so you can see what the thumbnail looks like. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use this as an example, I'm just going to use that skin tone there uh, which is the more of a fair skin tone. So just put that back into place. So basically, uh, first of all, what I do is draw out with a 708 Carbothello pencil. Now this is pastel matte. Now what's great about this pencil, just to show you on a bit of scrap, is if I make a mark with that and then rub it out, you can hardly see where the mark is and it don't damage the actual surface. This is the rubber I use. Now it's called a kneadable eraser. Uh, it's uh, Faber-Castell. It comes like in a plastic uh, box to keep it square. This is what I use for my graphite. I keep a separate one for my pastel. But that's how it comes. It comes obviously as a square. But it's ever so good. I've tried all sorts of different brands and they tend to crumble and they tend to get a bit dry. And, uh, but these, this, this, this brand is absolutely perfection. You can do loads with it. You can mould it and then just put in a little point and just do you know, little areas. But when you dab with this, it actually lifts off pastel as well, which keeps it all nice and uh, sort of clean and not so heavy. But yeah, I'd, I'd recommend, if you're looking for a kneadable razor, go for that, uh, for pastels. So, basically I draw the outline, so if I just roughly draw a certain area of it, that's all, uh, just, to, just to illustrate what I do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a light area here, and then a shadow here, area there. So that's the outline just roughed in. Now, I, there's three stages, the, is the underdrawing, the rich stages, and the detail. What I do normally is a detailed outline, and then I go over that outline with the underdrawing or underpainting, where I change things up, so I just get a little bit of form in there and the shadows, uh, and then I change the drawing. So that's why it's, that's the stage one, the outline and underpainting. So normally when I do a portrait, I use the chalkier ones. Now, 
The ones I tend to use are the Carbothello ones. This is a yellow ochre, which is an amazing colour for skin tone. And also this is a titanium white. And then I would use the olive green to desaturate the red. Now this is a vermilion red from the Carbothello range. So then you've got your three colours, or well, two colours there. So the blue I use is an ultramarine light to start with. So you've got your basic primary colours. Instead of a lemon yellow for the underdrawing, I'm using yellow ochre because that's a really good base. Um, it's not so vibrant. So for the underdrawing, I don't tend to sort of look at the vibrancy. It's all about getting the shapes right and drawing correct. So I move things around and with these chalky ones it's a lot easier to move things around and you're not putting too much pigment on there. You're still keeping that tooth there which you'll need when you start putting the rich colours on. So basically I'm going to show you how I apply these in a more sort of breakdown fashion. Now for the shadow areas I use brown and purple, those two there. Now that's a that's a Conti of Paris, same as that's a Conti of Paris. Now when I first started painting and doing pastels many many years ago there weren't that many uh, brands to choose from. Now I use the Conti of Paris, I only use those. So you could do a whole drawing with those. Um, but you see, we're using these different pencils, you get more depth of detail and texture. If I just use those, they tend to be a bit too soft and you can't get the, the texture you want. Um, so this is what I've found. I experiment with different brands, you see. So that's your Contia Pastel, Con sorry, Contia Paris and the uh, Carbothellos. Now, I tend to use, on the underdrawing, uh, another Contia Paris. This is like a purple-red, they call it more like a Lizzie and Crimson, a cold red. And then I use a cold green, dark green, from the Karen Dash series, which is uh, the one, the 719. And that together makes a really nice dark shadow, if I need a dark shadow. So uh, I tend to use those then for the underdrawing, those colours there. So basically what I do is start with the white. So I'm just going to show you a little bit here and then a little bit in certain areas. So I'm not going to draw the, all this because of the time involved. If you want more in depth look at this, there's those three types of skin tones I mentioned which you can find in the channel. So basically when you put this on it's going to feel a little bit grainy. You know, so you've just got to, you need that little bit of of texture there anyway because you're creating like um, different, well I could say textures again, different textures in the skin tone because skin is not is not <coughs> smooth, it's not like plastic. Now in the reference you'll see that there's like not quite dark but it's like a you know a, yeah, a value that it's not dark not light it's mid-tone so I just put a little bit of white in there so that's what I basically do just I put a very very light pressure on as well so I hold the pencil quite away from the tip and then just and the areas that don't it's, it's like a pink or dark pink I just put a little bit of that in just to just to give give a little bit of movement to it. it. It just helps to actually um, apply the next pencils. It gives you something to work on. It's, um, it's almost like when you do an oil painting wet on wet, you know, you put a little bit of paint on it and the next layers are easier to apply. Um, same with this really, it's just a case of just putting a bit of pastel in there. So all I'm doing look, is just putting a little bit in areas that need it. So I'm not going to do all this like I say, I'm just going to just show you what I normally do. Uh, so that's that's creating that sort of chin area there. I mean the drawing is probably not going to be accurate as well but I'm just, just showing you how I layer it. Layer it. Then I go in with the red, 
Now, you see how I'm holding that pencil really a long way from there. Now, don't put too much, because I've seen a lot of pictures that's been done, that's been following me, my technique, and it seems quite heavy with the pastel. It seems a bit too heavy. So you've got to build it up slowly. So don't expect it to be soft straight away. That's where I think most people are, are tend to pile it on because they think, oh no, it's too gritty, but it will be gritty to start with. Uh, but just to have patience, it will develop. So when I put this on, look, it looks really gritty, but I'm putting that on. I know it's wrong color, but I'm not worried about that. All I'm just doing is putting a layer of, of red on there, which will mix in, because don't forget, I'm mixing the colours rather than just picking a colour that is similar. Now this is just the underdrawing like I say but I'm just showing you roughly what I'm doing. So I'm just getting an idea of a certain value but not, not that bothered. It's just a matter of improving on that drawing. And just putting that in there, just put a little bit of light in here, just just uh, again, just put your, your red down. So, you see how I'm putting it on as well? I'm putting a little bit on, then rubbing my finger. So I'm not putting, I'm coating it completely, I'm putting just a little bit on, and then rubbing it so it spreads. Right, so that's that. Uh, Okey doke. So, we'll put a bit there as well. And also a little bit under and there. And again, what we'll do is we'll continue with this. We'll just put that on like so. We're just using the red to start with. Now we it's sh more shadowy and it goes past the mid-tone part because I'm using a system which is nine values. I don't know if you can see it on me. Yeah, you can just about see that. Yeah. It's nine values, four lights, four darks, and one mid-tone, right? So, getting your mid-tone, then everything else don't need the white in so much, you know what I mean? It's just like trying to find these values using the white down. You see how I put that little bit of white in there and then glaze over the top. But the darker ones, you don't tend to need the white in straight away you can put white over it it's uh, so what I'm doing is just putting the brown like that let me just try and get that drawing a little bit better there because it goes over a little bit more there like that nice will do it I'm gonna do it right nice will do it just there you can see the thing is with pastels all right I'll show you on the scrap piece Notice the there, look, I've, I've gone a bit too much with it. If you put too much of a heavy, let me just get a piece. Now, with pastels, if you put a little bit too heavy a white on it, and then I glaze over the top of it, it's going to be too bright, and it's going to be very difficult to change that into a neutral colour uh, without it getting a bit too, filling in the tooth too much. You'd have to use a green with that. And, and drop it down a bit. So what I'm, um, I'll go very lightly to start with. Uh, so don't go too heavy when you're doing the underdrawing, because sometimes you, that's why I use this grey board, because sometimes I'm using the board as an advantage. The board will shine through the colours and dull them down. If you know what I mean, you're using that board as some as a way of dulling the colour as well in some instance so you know it's just a case of building it up with this picture because it's got quite a bit of texture you know i'm tending to do that so that's it i don't want to do too much because it's the time involved in it so and then what i'll do with that is just put a little bit of green with that red just to desaturate it and to make it into a shadow. Because green and red are complementary colour, and any complementary colour, when you put them together, creates a natural shadow. So that's what you're wanting to use. 
So that's that. And then I can use a bit of it in there. Now it's a bit of a blue shadow because she's wearing a blue top. There, there's a bit of reflected light. So then I would use the blue there just for that reflected light underneath the chin. So that's basically what you would do as an underdrawing. It's just very lightly changing things around. You'd be changing your drawing where the lips are and the, the nose and the eyes until you're really happy with it because this can be easily rubbed off. I mean if I use the actual rubber there I can rub it more or less straight off look like that. But you won't be able to do that if you piled loads of colour on. So that's the reason why I tend to go light to start with while I'm, I'm drawing the actual underdrawing. So I've not used really all those colours for the underdrawing on this one because you, you know it's not that there's not that much darker area. Um, if it were a really dark area, I'd use uh, them two greens. I could put it, it say this area here where the ear is starting to come so it's going to be about up a bit more there but I'll just put it there anyway just just to show you and then you'd put green and red together and then a little bit of brown if it needs it so that's a really dark colour there so that's all I'm using for that okie doke right so So that's like the underdrawing basically. Now what I tend to do with the Caran Dash rich colours, pre-mixed colours, I tend to use uh, the flesh colour, 5%, 10% and flesh colour and this is a pink mix. So sometimes I use that, them for like a richer skin tone, like an olive skin tone. Um, so they can be used, but most mostly with this one, we're going to be in a light portrait. I'd use the pink mix, maybe a bit of that if I need to. But uh, just to show you now, I'm just going to do a little piece here and then a little piece here just to show you how I apply it. Now, I'm just stripping this down, you see, onto more of a basic look at it. Now, I would use also the Caran Dash. In some instances, I could use these as well. It depends on what the skin tones are. Again, refer to them three types of skin tones, uh, which is the video in my channel. Um, now, this is there's two whites Caran Dash do. There's there's one that's Chinese white and Azura Azurite white. One's fresher than the other. Now, the Chinese white is like a yellowy white, which is nice for skin tones. Depends how. Depends what you like. It's nice for rich skin tones, but you see this Az Azurite would look nice for this one because it's a fresh and it's more of a pinky fresh pale this complexion so maybe that white would be better for this so you play about with these different whites see which looks best and then I could use those two as well you know like for lips I could use those two there uh, and for richer colours I'd be using sort of this lemon yellow and the uh, yellow ochre as well uh, but like I say, for this one, with it being paler, uh, it won't be so much. But again, just keep referring to the, that in three ways how to draw the skin tones. I'm just showing you how to apply the actual um, pastels. So I'll do that, then a combination of the other colours I've shown you. So I've got them in my hand like this, that's all the colours that I've uh, explained what I've used. So I've got them in my hand here and just keep picking them out. So the first thing what I do is try and establish the brightness. So I'm using, I would use the white, the Caran Dash white. So I'll put that in first. Now I've got, not got too heavy, but I'm doing small circles. Now if I went in too heavy with that, it would cause loads of problems when I'm glazing over the top of it. It would make it as though it's too... It'd be too, it'd be too stark, too sharp. So you have to sort of really slowly 
feel your way so I'm putting lighter pressure on there but I'm still putting that fresh colour in because I want that freshness to come through so this is mixing with the colour underneath that I've already put down as well that's why another reason I do the underdrawing so I'm very very small circles like that very small circles I'm just going to do this little bit of a, of a chin here just to show you because I don't want to spend loads of time because you know the video can get too long for YouTube so that's it so it's not too heavy it's not not as bright as putting that down so I put a bright if I went too heavy on that you see it's going to be too bright and that would cause loads of uh, grief when you start to put the richer colours. Now you could try putting, now this is Vermilion right from uh, Karen Dash. Now you can try a little bit of that or but you see with this being paler skin you could do a combination of cold and warm like so um, or you could use that with a bit of blue which will make it more purplier so let's just see what does with that, what happens with that so if I use that in first you see it's too warm but I could put like ultramarine blue see how light I'm putting it though I'm holding my pencil there I'm not going heavy because if I went heavy it would be a nightmare to try and if I went as heavy as this it would be a nightmare to try and try and change up and I think that's what's happening when when that's why people's asking me to just show more uh, on more in depth you see that's now changing to the right colour so I'm using the, the the actual ultramarine blue and that warm red mixing that together To create that skin tone you can see how it's developed there a lot but you see we're using those little swirls and, and squiggles it's creating interest as well it's not just a flat a flat color so then I'm, I'm doing the same here just to put a bit on there so uh, now what I tend to do then is to soften that a little bit because the Karen Dash can be a little bit harsh so to soften it you can just go over it a little bit if you need to with a carbothello and that mix more in with the actual um, Karen Dash. Now I'm going over that bit of colour there because it needs to be lighter and now I'm mixing a bit of this in because I know it's not I'm trying to get a texture you see with this white and then I'll glaze over then with again the Karen Dash. I'll just show you what I'm doing here so if we do just put a little bit less there so you see how I'm just going big marks as well I'm not trying to draw everything exact it's just a feeling you want now I'll go over again now with the blue because it's got reflected light on that that's it and then go over them with the rich um, vermilion and then just use my finger but I'm only scraping it I'm not digging in and putting loads on like this you see this is where I think people are starting it's getting, it, getting the wrong idea and what that does it just creates loads of grief when you're trying to move things around so you have to slow slowly but surely build this technique up it does take time you have to be patient with it um, that's it then I'm just going to use that and then put a bit more blue in there. That's it. Now the yellow ochre, now you start, you're starting to go a little bit more of a yellowy colour here. So you can use your yellow ochre. bit of that in and 
and then you can put like your red, this is a carbophyll red over it. Now there's another way you can do this, um, is to put the red in and then desaturate that red to make it more of a grey red by putting the olive green in, which will create that sort of colour you're looking for. So I'll put a little bit of yellow, yellow ochre, that warm red, and then a little bit of and a, a bit of uh, olive green. So all I'm doing is just doing circles like this, small circles. Just going to show you this little bit here, and just make that softer there. You see, I'm just softening the edges of that a little bit as well. So we're just going to put that up there like that. I don't want to go mad with the uh, with this. Just want to show you how to apply it. Now I'm putting a little, now I know where that is, I'm putting a little more pressure on that pencil to smooth it out. That's it. Now you see it's too white, if you squint your eyes, so you just glaze over it very, very lightly. Again, I'm only putting very, very light strokes, very light strokes, very sort of, it's almost a zigzaggy, but then I just put my finger on it like and, and smudge it. <clears throat> now you can put a bit of green in there as well just to desaturate it a little bit on that. It makes a grey colour then, a grey grey colour. But you see because this has got quite a bit of reflected light on it I'm putting a little bit of blue in as well. You see, if it's too blue, you can just add a bit of uh, yellow ochre and it creates the green, the olive green colour, and then you can just use the red. So it's a combination of the two, and you can always get back to the shade you want. It never goes muddy, because you can, you know, it's all sort of fresh colours. That's it. So you can see how I'm applying it, I'm very long way from the tip, using these colours together, like so. Now for this area here, where you see me do a lot of using uh, red and, and the green, but first of all, you see how I put that on there, it's too dark. So what I tend to do then is line it up to what sort of tone I want by creating the texture. You see how I'm doing the swiggles, but very, very light pressure. I'm not putting a lot at all. And then I've got the colour of the paper as well as coming through as well. So you're using that as an advantage because you're creating that texture there a lot. So I'm squiggling it like that. You can see how I'm doing that there. And then what I'll do then is go over that then with red, this is the Carbothello red, so you play about with different reds <coughs> and see which, work, <coughs> see which works, um, that's what I tend to do, there's no set rule, you know you don't have to use the Carbothellos, the uh, our Caran Dash ones if it's not that rich, uh, if it's richer you, you use more of those. But again, just using uh, a little swirls like this. Just create a texture and then rub, rub it out with your finger. So that's giving you an idea. I just want to just do a little bit underneath here. So you've got reflected light underneath that chin there. And I'll just show you how I draw that uh, shadow underneath there. So you've got reflected light and you use your finger just to smudge it a little bit. That's it. Uh, again, this obviously I'm just showing this roughly uh, what I do, just how I'm using the pencils. So again, I'm see how I'm just going over it slightly, just over it very, very lightly. And then you could use, I know it's blue, 
but you can get the tone correct first by using the green and the red like so and then you can go over the blue to make it more of a purpley colour so that's another way I would do it so I would get a shadow first by using the green and the the red together you can see how that's creating see how I'm moving now with the pencil I'm just using this movement all the time swirling it round that's it there you go and then you can use then the yellow ochre I'm only using Carpathella ones because there's no need to, to, to go too rich with it. Um, you have to play again to see which works, uh, but don't go too heavy with it. Now just to create a little bit of depth here, I'm just going to go over with a white. So again, I'll use... Now, with uh, this one I'll show you how I use the pink mix. So with this one I'd use like a pink mix. So you could use that. If you haven't got a pink mix, just use white and then glaze over like I've done here. So I'm just going over with a pink mix. But you can see how bitty it's getting, look. And sometimes this, this is what happens when you use a Caran Dash. It looks very, very dish, uh, like a scratchy in that. So you can just go over that now with a Carbofella, very small circle. See how it's softening it up like that. And then I'm mixing the two types of pigment together then so the richer colours and the chalkier colour which is creating more of a, an easier way of doing it. So then I can go over now uh, with the warm red. Now I could use a little bit of cold red on there as well just to mix it together. You have to feel what temperature it feels like uh, and then make a decision on which way to go. Now you can cool it down by putting a bit of blue on there as well so if it's a bit warm you can always add a bit of blue to it and that will create a colder red so you can mix it up like that you see. So if your red's too warm just add a bit of blue to it and it'll cause it make it a more of a, 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 a colder red. Now if you want it warmer you add a bit of yellow to it you see. See how it works with the colour wheel. Now with this one now I'm just using a bit of yellow ochre. That's it. And then you see I'm trying to create, oh, so it's, like a, it's almost like marble, you know, there's that many colours in skin, it's amazing. Especially when you start to open the heart. And all the time again, I'll just explain again, because it's part of how I do it. I open the heart, you see, I don't think about what I'm doing, I just, I just do it. Uh, which is very difficult for me to actually create these videos, and it's been a challenge because... I don't think about it, I just do it and I've a mind to sort of analyse what's happening so I can communicate that with you. Now it's getting better, when I first started these videos it, they were very awkward how they sounded uh, because it was like going against the grain a little bit but I'm getting used to it now. It's almost as though talking's just happening, like my painting's just happening now, I'm not even thinking about what I'm saying. I'm just, it's just coming up from the same place as where I'm drawing from, which is an amazing feeling. Uh, so I'm using blue, you see, because I'm making that red into a colder red by adding a little bit of blue. Now that makes it easier then to change it up. You can see how that's working now. You can see how the colour theory works. So you don't really need all these pre-mixed colours you know, sometimes I use them for quickness, 
Um, but if you really want that subtlety and, and your skin to look marbly, you don't really need it. You just need, you know, you only need to buy those primary colours from, from Caran Dash really, rather than a whole set. You know, so I will leave a list of colours in the description below as well, so you can got the numbers and that. But you can see how that's uh, coming together now. Now I'm going to put the warm red in there to start with. Now to desaturate that I'll make put a green with it but you see it's a cold, see that's made a, a warm shadow you see. I need it a cold shadow so to make that red cold add a little bit of blue it'll make it colder, make a cold red make it more like a Elysium Crimson. So you mix in your red. So rather me putting um, this on, I can mix that by just adding one colour. Uh, I could put that on as well, sometimes I do, you'll see me doing that. Just for, for, for effect, you need to glaze it. Uh, it. You see how that works. You know, it's just a case of playing. But you know your, your, your principles. Once you know your principles, you can change things around. So there's loads of things I'm doing, which is very, very, very hard for me to communicate, because um, until I've broken it down myself, I, I, you know, I just do it. I just see the colours, and uh, but now it's been quite useful actually because it's made it as though I understand what's happening as well really uh, you know like I'm mixing the blue here to make that a colder where well, I just used to automatically do that um, but then add the green again you see but sometimes I'd use if it were really dark I'd use those two a cold a cold red and a cold green which it would create the same sort of thing there's all there's all different combinations you can use like I'm doing that now, look, I'm making it a colder by just putting those together. But there's another option you can just, if you're using the warm one, if it's gone too warm, just add blue and it'll make it, it'll, it'll make it cold, like I'm doing here. So that's the same sort of thing. So it's a case of working out what looks best. So I'm using the blue here. And then use the red because there's a reflected light in there. Now, if that's too cold and it's purple, um, you can just warm that up a bit. You can warm that up by putting yellow with it. Now, to to create something to make it look more uh, vibrant as well, is add a little bit of yellow, lemon yellow. That's what I tend to do. Uh, you see, with this very subtle skin tone, so I'm putting a little bit of that in, but you can see how that's changed it. Now, I didn't go in there heavy with the, you know, I didn't go in like, you know, I'm putting loads of lemon yellow in. It's very, very lightly putting it on, and then, and then it's very, 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 only you're scraping the surface, and then you're mixing it in with it, you see, and that'll create that chroma you want, but it's only a slight chroma in this, re in this respect. So therefore you've got that there, so you, you want that a little bit greenier. Now it's two choices, you can use the letter the olive green, which I tend to do, or you can just change it up by just using uh, the ultramarine blue. But you have to be subtle with it, uh, that's why it's easier just to use the green. Um, because it just seems to be natural when you put it together with a skin tone. Uh, but then you can subtly talk by adding a little bit of blue here and there when you start putting the details in. So this is the, you know, the actual uh, rich stage. So once I've got that in, oh, let me just do a little bit of that there. So to create that, this is not drawn accurately, but I'll just put a little bit here just so you can see. So if I put that there, 
So I'm mixing red and green together, which will create a natural shadow. It's warm, and that's a warm feeling. When you feel that part of the picture, it's warm. So you keep it warm, um, and then you just add a bit of lemon, uh, yellow ochre with it, like so. But to warm it up even more, I would put a little bit of uh, vermilion from that, from uh, Karen Dash. Now you can use a brown as well, just so it melt, melts into that area. So a brown, like so, brown and then red together, like so. Now, and do the same there. You can see what I'm getting at and now it's applied. Um, right, so that's that. Now details, so I'm not going to do too much. I'm just, I'm just going to put the details in here now. And then just a bit of details in this area here. So basically the rich colour stage is to, again it's a blocking stage, but you're trying to get more of the value right. Now for the details, then I tend to use, I will look at it now and you, you think right, the vibrancy and the edges, so it's values and edges, so here it's really bright, so I'd use uh, the as a right white, see that's really white there. If you squint your eyes, it's, and then I can glaze over that then with a bit of a yellow probably. So what I'm doing here, I'm creating the texture. So what I'm doing now is putting the details in. So I'm trying to put all those subtleties in. So I'm moving that pencil in order to see I'm creating texture, the skin texture. Just going to show you on this little bit here, and then what I can do then is glaze over that with a bit of red again. In this case of going backwards and forwards with this technique is, is to put the white in and then glaze, white in, glaze. Now sometimes it will be the pink mix and glaze, it depends what works. In this instance, because it's quite light, I'm using white, that's all. But you can see that's developing now. And then I want to get this freshness here. So put that white down first. See, you need to get that white in first, then put the blue over the top of it. And then that white will shine through that blue. So if I put the, the ultramarine light now, very very lightly on it and then rubbing into it that will create the subtlety that you need and then here it's a bit darker so what I'm going to do is just put it in there like that now you see that then all I do now is put a bit of green with that and that will create a warm, warm and coldish grey colour. That's it. So and then you get your, your Carbofello white and then just go over it. So basically that's how I'm doing it. I'm just going to do focus on this little bit here. Like I say I've got the, them three ways to do the um, the skin tones. Um, I've got uh, there's one in the page one if you wanted to check that out. Right, you see now this area is a little bit of yellow, a yellow ochre and a little bit of blue with it. You can use that or you can have just gone in with green. So it's a choice you make, it's just you have to see how it feels. Now you see this is looking a little bit, see how it looks solid. So what I'm using now is the Carbofella White, and then it's titanium white which is known for mixing very well with colours. 
uh, it very tint, tints really well. So that's what I'm doing with that now. You see how I'm creating the texture by just going here and there, like so, like that. And that's it. That's it. See how that's made that look different. And that's it. And then here, which will correct this tone, is do the same here with the Carbothello. It's just creating that texture like this, and then I'll glaze over again because you don't want pure white. It's got to be slightly pink. So I'm just going to, there, that's it, and then use the Carbothello, and this is a detail stage, and you keep doing that until it starts to seem right. So here, you've got it running a bit bluer here, look, and you see you've got that reflected light going this way like so so then I'll just glaze again with that you see you see how it's too warm now you can make that colder by adding blue which will make it a cold red like so or you can change it by just putting a bit of Elysium Crimson over the top of it, which will be doing a similar job, but uh, then it could be too cold if you're not careful. So you just have to play to see what works. See, the red now is starting to look, needs to be a bit warmer, so then I add a bit of yellow to it. So you see how you can create subtleties, and that how I described that colour wheel earlier, it should make it easier for you to understand now how that works and how my technique works. So that'll make it easier then if you start to do the paintings I've got in uh, Patreon, it'll make it easier for you to actually um, do it now. Uh, you know, it all adds to the actual information. Like I say, I'm growing while I'm doing this it's, it, and communication, because like I say, I'm just letting these words just pop up now and hopefully I don't get to really listen to what it is till I start doing the editing um, so I'm just letting it happen so just glazing now again with this like so now to make that fresher I'll put a bit of blue on, on that mix a bit of blue in it like so and then you've got that nice fresh skin tone there okay I keep stepping back a lot as well now uh, there's a lot of work to, to do on this you know obviously uh, it's only just an idea of how I do it I mean me, the techniques takes quite a while to do but I don't worry about the actual time it takes, I just do it and it takes as long as it takes. If you start watching the clock, it'll just tense everything up. If you put an egg timer on yourself, worst thing you can do really. Uh, because you cut corners, you think, oh no, it's taking too long, let me do it quicker. Then they end up really missing out on all the subtleties uh, because you, you're going too far ahead of yourself. Um, so I would recommend just uh, just taking your time with it and build it up slowly. But you can see how it's coming together. Um, if you want to use in the background, you can just just take that. You know, if you're just using the background, just the background colour, you can just take that off with the uh, needed bull eraser. Right, just to show you this little bit of a shadow now, then then we'll call it at that. I'm just going to put details in here. It's not not really correctly drawn. It's, you know, I've run out of space. Should be this way a little bit. So I'm just going to show you how I do the shadows. Now, it's war that's warm. You see, see how that's looking warm. So I can use the warm red. And then the cold green and what I'm using a combination of the two here. Um, 
is if I wanted it warmer I can use the warmer green which is the olive green. Now again I'm using white very very lightly you won't think you're using white but I'm getting the texture so it's very very softly it's hardly touching it just scraping it over the top of this just to get that texture like that and that's it just to get that sort of feeling of it and then it warm here it needs to keep warm but you see as it goes that way it goes colder so you could add either blue with it to make this into a, a colder red so you add blue as you go along and then it becomes like a purpley red or you can use the Elysium Crimson like this um, I tend to play about just to see which which best um, but that's the simplest way of doing it Okay, so uh, oh, just to talk to you about other things I can use sometimes. If I use, I use these Rembrandt sticks now and again. I tend to use um, like the Jesus one. I used it there because it's a bigger picture as well, so I could I can get in with it. Um, but they like a, a warm, a warm colour mixed together, and a bit more white in one than the other. Uh, that's yellow ochre, uh, different uh, tones of it. So I tend to use those two, basically that's all, and white. Just to talk to you about the other pencils I've got as well, which is the um, the Faber Castell. Now these are what I used for the eyelashes of Kai, that little footballer, me, me uh, great nephew. Uh, that's the range. So I'll use those. The, the very hard pencil they don't tend to blend very well I don't find uh, I'm still playing about with them but they are ideal for fine detail if you need it uh, just as eye bright, eyelashes and that but I'm still playing about with them so you know I need time to work on them but I like to be loose nowadays, nowadays so and I like things to blend easy so I tend to use the others uh, but yeah there's still time it's always worth trying different things Now this is what I use to sharpen my pencil with, it's a 9mm, it's a snap off blade, get these anywhere really, they come in all different shapes and sizes. Now these are the pencils I tend to use, the three pencils, the Carbothello, Comte of Paris and the Caran Dash ones. Now they all tend to be slightly different, some has got more glue on than others. But what you tend to do is, about an inch away from that point, that's when you start to chafer off. So if you do that first, sloping towards the point, then you won't have a chance of snapping that lead. Because if you start going there, and going at that angle, it'll dig into that lead and it'll snap off. So you've got to slope it down. This is when you use it. So you slope it down like so. Just taking it off pushing that thumb through I'm just going to pour a new blade in so cut the, come, the pack, packs of blades come like that just take, them out, take one out and I'm just going to put a new one in just start struggling with it it's always best to pour a new blade in and when you put a new blade in always get a piece of tissue Pull it out like that, make sure the sharp end's going away from you and just pull your tissue through like that. It gets rid of that grease, put a little bit of grease on there just to keep it from rusting. You want that off. So, and then again this will be easier now. Yeah, you see it goes through like butter now, so you just make it so it goes to a point. That's it. And now with the Conti of Paris again there's glue at the side of them so again go back about an inch from the point and then slowly but surely keep it sloping towards that point just, just slide it through like that taking off that wood but there's going to be glue there and if you don't get that glue off it'll be really scratchy so then I find a clean bit of blade 
and just turn it around. See it's sticking, the glue is sticking to that blade so I know it's there so you've got to just keep going until there's no glue. See how it's sticking to it. So that's it. So that's up, that's fine. Same with the Karen dash. Right, so we'll just push through again, just an inch away from that edge. Now I didn't use this pencil much because it didn't need it for that uh, reference image. But like, again, just keep refer, refer to that three types of skin tone. You see me, you can see me using these pencils then. You've got to get that uh, blue off there. To the end. If you found value in it and you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Appreciate it, it would help the channel. Leave a comment and a message in the comments below. Uh, let me know what sort of videos you want me to produce. I've actually left a couple of links here for you to uh, click on. And to subscribe, click on the circle here. It's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Thank you so much, take care and be well.